So, hello and welcome back to the next episode of the Self-Development with Tactics podcast. And I am fucking pumped to be here again, and more in fact because, as you can see, if you are on the YouTube video, I stepped up my game, definitely stepped it, stepped it up, and I do have now some kind of an intro, some kind of an uh, intro screen where, you know, there is just something different than all the fucking time else, uh, which is, I think, totally something that I enjoy. Um... And it has a lot of just obvious uh, advantages uh, compared to, you know, the regular just move or the regular just look of my videos. Just looks more interesting. I can just play a little bit with it. I can just, you know, do it in a different way. I could add music. I could do so many more things that I actually didn't know. So I'm just using the same program as well, so just as before quite, but I didn't know that. You know, and this is this is always the thing that um, often you just come to certain conclusions or come to certain points, or just think about certain things, and you come to so, some yeah some other solution or things that you've you know haven't been thinking of, and this is then just something great. So I always enjoy it when I just step across something that I haven't been thinking about, and and yeah, but. But, 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 I do have certain problems with the setup today. Never mind. So, um, yeah, we are going ahead with the actual video. As you can see, maybe in the background, if you have been just, uh, if you've been joining me and this is your first episode, this is uh, Top of Mind, which is basically a book for all the influencers, for all the companies, for all the uh, personal brands, and for quite everybody. And this book is basically quite uh, about marketing, how um, content distribution could work, um, how, you how you could make yourself a good uh, content team and what you need for good content, how to be liked by the people you are serving, how to actually serve the people. So this is actually one of the books I would say that actually just provides a lot of value and just a, a broad spectrum and a broad and, and a great amount of facets of just business, I would say. But yeah, um, the last time, which was actually the third time, and I do hopefully hope, <laughs> no, I do hope that um, I will finish this one today, um, because I'm not quite into just going through it once more after this one, because then it would actually be the fifth episode, um, which is something I do not know. I, I do like it, definitely, I like doing these videos, um, but I do not know if it's that interesting for you. <laughs> And it's maybe not that interesting for me as well. You know, it always depends on what the book is like and, you know, whatsoever. But, um, yeah, anyways, uh, this is also one of the reasons why I'm quite, uh, yeah, why I'm quite um, happy that I do just go through two books at a time, uh, which then provides for me just the, the change in my life. So if I just would do all the five episodes that I did on this particular book, um, you know, in a row quite, so just today and tomorrow and, you know, the day after tomorrow and so on and so on, I think this would just be so fucking boring for me that I'm just, yeah, as I said, I'm, I'm pretty fucking happy that I do just had the idea of actually doing two, um, two books at a time or going through two books at a time at a time, um, but yeah, but we'll stop with uh, what's happening there and I do remember thankfully, um, to close everything. And I do actually was thinking about adding music, but I do not know, because the problem with adding music would be if I would actually use the video as, um, you know, uh, an Instagram video as well, or as a uh, particular other YouTube video, as so some kind of a motivational, um, yeah, mix-up or mash-up or whatever you want to call it this would then be not that good because I would just have to just listen to the music and have to be sure, okay, if I'm just putting music over music, this might sound completely shit. And if I'm there using some kind of a music that might be too bright and too vibrant and too happy for the video that I actually want to create, this would also be fucking bad. But, um, but I would on the other side say that having some music in the background would make it a little bit more interesting maybe if I'm not that entertaining enough. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, so it would definitely be a little kind of another vibe to it. And I would just maybe add a little bit more spice to it as well. But I don't know, you know, oh my God. No, 
so this should be fine. I actually do think normally it's like this. Could it be like this? Or like this? Yeah, normally it's like this. Um, so yeah. So committing to a process of content creation. And this was actually the point where I stopped, but I do just want to recap it again because I just feel like, okay, um, maybe I'll need this one. Maybe I'll just need this one to just try to not really jump into the episode, but rather just have some kind of transition. So you don't need to create all the content yourself, obviously. But besides that, I wouldn't be like, okay, um, I do not want to create any content. So you do need original content. You know, most of the people will come to your site, to your page, to your profile, whatever you're doing, because they want to see your content. They are not coming to see any fucking content of any fucking other page, other Instagram page especially, um, from other people. You know, this is not what they want. They want just original content. So maybe the thing is, a lot of people just want to have some content. The problem is you not having as a personal brand, which would be the most extreme example, you as a personal brand without actual just original content would be just really fucked because you do not have any any fucking reason for the people to actually come to you. You know, they actually could come to any other fucking person or site and just check out their content because it's just, um, you know, another person's content anyway. So, so yeah. Uh, surround, yourself, so surround yourself with a team of strategists, writers and editors. Together, figure out a collaborative creative process for translating the knowledge bank ideas into engaging written content. The content reviewer should ask, does this make sense and could anything in here hurt my brand? And the last sentence was actually the one that I was speaking about in the last few minutes of the last episode, uh, where I just told a little story about Elon Musk and what he had to do with the content re review and what um, kind of encounter he had with him or her. I actually do not know whether it's a him or her he is having. And the publication distribution. Even the best piece won't get you close to becoming top of mind if no one in your audience ever reads it. And that's totally true. And this is also something that I think about. And I then think about it like, okay, you know, maybe my content is good enough but maybe just the people who actually want to see it and the people that might be interesting to them uh, aren't seeing it actually. Therefore, advertising would be a thing, but this is something that I do feel about like, okay, you know, I could do it practically and in terms of the money, I could also do it, but do I really want to spend the money on it? Do I really want to just be faster and just not be patient? And maybe even my content isn't good enough, you know, and this would be the, just a the fucking point where I do just, you know, kind of leave... A lot of money or just lose a lot of money but yeah um blah 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 blah, blah. so start with guest contribute contribute the content on external pu publications the vehicles to build authority and tap into an existing audience actually a good idea and also collab collaborating collaborating whatever you know what i mean and um with you know, the best thing would be with really big artists, which do have a really just big audience already. But um, yeah, most of the time I wouldn't say that this is quite possible for just a newcomer or just someone that is quite starting out with, you know, what the other person might be doing for uh, their whole life. And they won't probably just work with someone that are just, you know, so I yeah, do not have quite any experience. So, and I would just understand it totally. Um, target publications that your audience reads. So target publications that your audience reads. So where are they hanging out online? What are they reading? And how can I get in front of them? And this is actually a good point because um, this then really comes up to who your target audience is. You know, if your target, target audience is between 10 and 17, they might be not reading quite a lot of newspaper ads or newspaper um, yeah, newspaper in general, I would say. You know, in a really big macro. So in the micro, there will definitely be a lot of just um, yeah, 17, 16, 15 euros that might be just, you know, uh, reading through the newspaper even every single day. But on the big picture, on the very macro, you can totally see, or I think it's totally like, okay, um, you could, you know, probably better reach them with online ads or ads on YouTube or um, just social media in general. But in general, I would say online. So in the digital world, and um, but there, there are also some other things. Are there more on YouTube? 
add them on Facebook, add them on Instagram, add them on this forum or on this forum or on this forum. You know, there are quite a lot of factors to um, where your audience actually is and what they are reading, which means that maybe they are just reading only just really short paragraphs or really short short stories. Maybe they want to have just really big stories. Maybe they do just want to have, you know, audio content or video content. Maybe they do not even like written things. So this could also be just, you know, the thing. And how can you get in front of them, which is basically, I think, what just some kind of, yeah, what do they want to see? What topics do they want to see? How they want to see them in terms of how they actually, how you actually design your content, whether it's written audio or video is then, um, yeah, doesn't quite matter. Then it just matters how you produce and how you make the audio, how you produce and how you make the written and how you produce and how you make the imagery or, um, yeah, the imagery. Uh, contrib contributing content is based on relationships and commitment to, uh, to engaging unique content designed for that publication. Engaging unique content designed for that publication's audience, not your own agenda. Um, this is quite a fucked up sentence. <laughs> I'm quite sorry for that. But what the author actually wants to say here, whether it's the author of the book or the author of um, the summary itself. So basically, um, I do could actually add some kind of... No, I won't. Um, I'm actually on the paulminus.com website and I'm going through Top Mind by John Hall. Is John like John and Hall like H-A-L-L. -L. I'm hopefully just, you know, pronouncing it the correct way. But... Um, but it's totally the thing. You should never ever make content that you like. You know, yeah, you should totally like it as well. But it's more about your target audience. It's more about your customer. The most important thing is that they like it. You know, whether you like it or not, is then something that's kind of an optional thing. You know, the best thing would actually be you both like it because you then feel good producing it and your audience and your customer feels good by just receiving it because this is actually what they want. Um... But this is totally something that a lot of people, at my point of view at least, get wrong. They just also or only design things or make things. They would just, you know, go through on their own. And they do quite only just, you know, listen to themselves rather than, rather than listening to the actual audience or the actual customer. But yeah. So the first one is follow the publications, con contribute the guidelines and totally interesting and totally important i would say um, especially also in the design part where you put your logo can you actually put your logo somewhere do you actually have any rights to just use it in another way afterwards there are a lot of things you know in terms of uh yeah guidelines and or laws and or restrictions and or whatever copyright a lot of things <laughs> the second one is send your unique article a respectful pitch and a thoughtful personal email to the editor the third one is correspond for potential revisions and edits. And the fourth one is they accept the piece and it goes live. This would actually be the most or the best scenario. The thing is, I would even say if you just pretty much cold emailing a lot of kind of, you know, um, a, lot of, um, a lot of people who may have a blog, who may have an Instagram page and you just want to work with them or you want to just be on their site, maybe they just want to kind of money for doing that or you you won't just be able to do that you know this is also some kind of truth and i hope he's actually only he's actually speaking about that so i'm not quite sure to be honest so once it's up here is what's next your social media team transforms the article into engaging social media content and use it in conjunction with strategic hashtags and direct mentions. To activate amplifiers for your content and increase followers, a few examples uh, of ways to share... Sorry, I just fucked it completely up. So your social media team transforms the article into engaging social media content and use it in conjunction with strategic hashtags and direct mentions to activate amplifiers for your content and increase followers. Um, I think the, the most difficult part is really to start because you can't actually listen to your audience because you do not have one. You know, if you're having a business and you know your customer, you totally have some data of them and you totally know what they're into and what they just, yeah, really want to see. But if you're just really starting only with social media and want to build social media first and then actually kind of translate it into an actual business, 
um, then it's pretty difficult, I think. Then it's just about really putting out what you think is good and actually being like in your process like, okay, you listen to the con you listen to uh, the engagement and to what people say when I just, you know, listen or watch or read your content and then you just adapt to that. You know, if they say, okay, this is a good content and if they maybe like the long form video, totally make snippets out of it and put it on social media as well. Which is basically, by the way, if you didn't know, um, quite Gary V's, um, Gary V's uh, social media strategy. So he actually produces a lot of long form videos or long form content like um, half an hour or one hour of um, video upload each day or half an hour or one hour of audio. So podcast upload each day and whatever. And whenever he sees that a lot of people just um, really engage with certain things and or certain parts of this long form content, he actually cuts it out or he teams cuts it out and puts them on uh, social media as well so that people actually can see what they've already resonated with and what they've already liked and to just like it even more and maybe they're even just really small parts of this certain speech that a lot of people just like then as well and maybe you can just cut it out and put it on as well and maybe not directly in the same way like only the video just maybe design it in a different way design it in an innovative way um, so that people aren't actually getting bored from uh, or off actually the same shit or you actually just putting up the same shit. I think in general design, especially on Instagram, is pretty important. I would say, you know, in general, you know, in online media and or just on, on social media platforms, design is pretty important because um, if some things do not look good, um, I would say and even work not good. I often see people who are actually using just so bad font or bad typefaces for their designs, you know, typefaces that you can, can't actually read anymore because they are so condensed or so light and um, even on a black background or just a, a colorful background where you totally can't see any fucking thing, which is something you should, you know, kind of watch out to. Um, but yeah, so a few tips of him is the headline and the link. So a few examples of ways to share your podcast, your post, your post include the headline and the link, a quote from the article, if you can actually add a link, you know, on Instagram you can't, on Twitter, Facebook and Tumblr you can, a quote from the article, a question, stats mentioned in the article, your PR team includes the content in pitches to, to in, entice, entice influencers and publication contrib contributors to source that content, um, your SEO team uses the right tools and software to track its performance and search and optimize your efforts to ensure that the content is showing up for the terms that draw more of the right eyes to your work. Um, you use paid promotion distribution and amplification efforts to increase your chances of getting your content in front of the specific audiences you're targeting. Your email marketing team incorporates the piece into your next campaign to ensure that your distribution networks stay connected to your thought leadership efforts. Um, what the fucking hell? <laughs> um, your entire staff shares their article through their personal and professional networks and increase the article's reach. Um, republish the article on your LinkedIn page, tweaking it so that there is direct call to action for leaders to engage further with your content. And I think, and this is quite a, you know, a big part of social media and working on social media and working with social media is that actually knowing that certain platforms just really want certain content and certain forms of content. LinkedIn is definitely a platform where you just do not want to put up just the same content as on Instagram. You know, this is something that's totally clear because this is more for corporate, you know, things. If it's businesses, if it's like in portfolio, if it's like some other things, I feel like it's more like business more like copyright more like classic and or not classic but just i'm thinking of a suit i'm not thinking of a t-shirt i'm quite thinking of a suit with you know suit shoes and all this stuff um when you're thinking about instagram it's more definitely more artistic definitely more design definitely more creativity definitely more of just putting out what you want and um, i'm just thinking about like paint and just being creative um twitter it's actually something that I quite not understand that well. So actually I put out the same content on 
Instagram and on Twitter and on Facebook as well. Um, and Facebook and Instagram, I think they correlate pretty well, even though I see not any just future in Facebook because um, you can definitely see that no one is just fucking, uh, yeah, pretty much seeing your content because they just really don't deliver it to your audience quite often, which is totally a fucked up shit. And, but, uh, you know, it makes sense for them because they just want you to pay for getting the reach and for getting whatever, which, um, yeah, totally makes sense for me. But yeah, um, sent, the art sent the article to a handful of industry influencers, business leads or other valuable connections and encourage members of your team to do the same. I'm going to write about this topic again. You tell each of them individually what are your thoughts and I would love to incorporate a quote from you. Finally, distill the essence of your article into different formats. These might include slide share decks, infographics and white papers. The more shareable, the better. The goal is to open up new rules for your audiences or for audience to discover and make use of your content. And that's totally true and that's totally a great point. And I do really like the view that this author and also the author of the summary puts on creating content because he says you should be diversified, which is totally, I think, one of the keys. You know, only putting stuff up on or on, on, on Instagram is good. Yeah, it is good because you can concentrate on it and whatsoever. But if fucking Instagram goes down, you're going down as well. Um, which is something that's not good, you know, and therefore I would actually say, and this is something that a lot of people say, just build up your Instagram and no, just build up your Twitter and Facebook and Tumblr and, you know, whatever platform you like as well. Um, because if Instagram goes down, you still have these, these three lefts. If these three go, go down, then you have still Instagram left. You know, it's just, just something practical, you know, it makes sense. Um... It's a very, very fucking long way to go. I'm just not fucking getting it in this fucking episode. <laughs> Shit. Um, never mind. So it is actually a good book. So um, so I think it's, it's okay to go through it a few times. I feel like it's okay, yeah. Um, content funnels and... No? Yeah. Uh, metrics that measure impact. To measure the real impact of your content, you need to track the right metrics. They include analytics such as the traffic and social shares, Sorry, the amount of time visitors spend reading your content, the number of leads converting from it, the impact of your content on search engine optimization, SEO, efforts and search engine results page, SERP, rankings. Metrics guide you in making constant incremental improvements to your contents so that it's always relevant, helpful and engaging. These metrics will also give you insights into your audience, like what kind of headlines do they click on, what topics are they most interested in so you can follow up, and which piece of content made them convert into leads. Um, totally great point. Um, I do still think that it is pretty difficult though, because, um, especially in my case, I do just often see on my metrics and see what posts actually work the best. And the thing is, I do not see any fucking correlation between all these posts, you know. Um, I have a few posts that, you know, went up just really fucking bad and I didn't actually know why and I still don't know why. But um, I just, you know, as I said, I just looked them up. I just saw, I just looked at them, have a look at them or had a look at them. And I was like, you know, I don't see any fucking rule behind this. So I'm not seeing any fucking kind of pattern. And maybe I'm just not just um, yeah, looking at it that, that well. Maybe I'm just not seeing it. You know, this could totally be the thing. But, um, but yeah. The fourth one is the content funnels and customers. Um, the journeys or the journeys, whatever. So the best serve, to best serve your audience, you have to complete... So you have to completely understand each stage of your journey and create a funnel so that the path leads to you. The first one is problem identification and awareness. The journey begins with the buyer becomes aware of a specific problem, opportunity or need that they are facing and they then might wonder or they are wondering what are the options, how can I fulfill this need or address this problem, what are the experiences experiences of others in this situation and what challenges can I expect to face uh, 
face as I move forward. Um, I would say in general, having these questions and just having a look on this question just really gives a very, very obvious thought to you. I'm stopping now. Maybe you think about it, maybe not. Um, which is basically, if they're thinking of those questions, what is the best option? Um, how can I fulfill my need? How can I solve my problem? How can I just get the best experience out of it? They should think about your brand. If they're just thinking about this, they should then come to the conclusion that your brand is actually fulfilling their needs, solving their problems, is the best option, and so on. Whether it is actually, I think it doesn't even matter that much, you know? Um, because often I feel like, no, it matters, sorry. It totally matters. You do just have to be the best option to, to really have a chance. The problem that I'm always seeing is that a lot of people might think that you can totally advertise and market a product that is completely shit. But I wouldn't say so. I would say like, okay, um, you just have to have a great, a great product to really market it in a great way. You totally can't. Sorry, you totally can market a very, very bad product, but the thing is people will buy it once and they will just leave it again. And you, they will leave you as well and they will be, be pissed on of your fucking brand as well. And what's the roy of that? It's quite nothing. You might get a short-term money back um, from your efforts you take or you took, but at the end it's nothing like long-term gain. You know, if you're going for the long term and if you're really trying to get the product and make a product that is really benefiting the people you're actually serving, then you actually can be sure that people will come again and people will tell other people to come to you again and so on and so on and so on. So actually, which is totally something that I do just, yeah, I do just not quite always think about, you know, I'm just also sometimes, you know, pretty much drifting into these kind of short term behavior as well and then just have to remind myself on being patient and being just a little bit more patient and just wait, wait a year, wait two years, wait three years. Um, nobody knows how long I will wait until I can actually make a living or even a great living of um, what actually I'm doing right now, you know. And But I will see, you know, I will see and do totally document it and will talk about it in the way that I'm just actually um, quite pursuing my dream. Uh, maybe it is my dream. Maybe, you know, the thing is, these things also change. You know, it doesn't have to be the thing that I will dream of this, you know, maybe in the next, you know, after 50 years as well. Maybe this will just fuck me up and I will just really pissed that I actually took this route or this path. But who the fuck knows? And therefore, I'm just trying hard to get the, the best out of it. I'm trying to learn as much as I can. And I totally can see that there has that there are a, a lot of benefits to me in my process. So even if I just don't get to my goal, even if it would just take me a long while, I would still learn a lot of things. I would practice my English speaking. I would learn a lot about business and a lot about marketing, a lot about the other stuff that I'm actually talking about and so on. And I also know um, a lot of stuff about marketing and, you know, actually producing great content and actually distributing it and kind of yeah, getting a lot of experience in this way as well, which could be totally worthwhile for other companies that might employ me as their social media guy. Um, yeah, your content should largely be educational and help the individuals connect the dots from the, pro from the pro problem to how they may be able to solve it. Um, the problem that I'm seeing right there is that um, being ed educational is not necessarily what you should be. You know, a lot of people do not want to have knowledge. A lot of people do not want to have the most information when they're just watching a YouTube video. They just want to be entertained, you know, and this is also a way of giving value to people by just being entertaining or just giving value to them or just giving value to them or being entertaining. You know, it's an or, totally an or. You know, it doesn't have to be one or the uh, one or the other one, but um, yeah, it totally again comes up to who your target audience is. And there is an example of an educational ebook or educational ebooks. Um, find out where your target buyers live online and publish content content through, and specifically for those channels. Um, yeah, for those channels, I've been talking about it. LinkedIn definitely just wants other content than fucking Instagram and so on. At uh, CTASs, which are call to actions that direct visitors to your gated content where you can offer 
them even more value in exchange for their contact information and permission to follow up. With gated content, your readers get premium access to relevant insights and you enter valuable information into your database, taking you a step closer to becoming top of mind. Um, when I'm thinking quite about premium content, I always just think about buying for the content, which at my point of view isn't the way to go. I think this is not the best way because then you're just really putting quite a, a border, like like a wall between the people and the knowledge that they may need. You know, And if they just get it from you, they will totally be happy that they found it from you and will just follow up with you, watch your videos, buy your merch, just buy into your videos, buy into your written content and so on and so on. So at the end, um, just giving away certain things with money or for money, at my point of view, does make some does make sense to some some point of view because um, just paying something for something <laughs> so paying something or paying some money for something totally puts you the buyer into a totally different position than if you're getting it for free and um, you will be more honest about it and or more just taking more effort for it or with it and so on so there are a lot of other psycho psychological thoughts um, into just actually pricing your content and or pricing your products um, but yeah actually giving it away is just a way to really serve everybody and this is something that's totally clear um, yeah uh, the second one actually research and considerations or consideration the research stage is often the lengthiest and of their of of the entire journey, which is why most of your content will be targeted here. You need to be patient, strategic, and perhaps most important, consistent. Your goal is here to be is to be is to be present. Your goal here is to present your audience with the solution and show them the complex complex complexities and expertise involved in doing it, in doing it well, which will overwhelm them and convince them that they help that they want help implementing it. An example would be guides and best practices. What the fuck? Uh, you, you now want to encourage your audience to spend more time on your website through tactical, actionable and educational on-site content. You can further establish yourself as a valuable resource, resource on that journey and become a top of mind option for the future purchasing decisions. And I like the um, just the really last sentence or the really kind of bit of the last sentence, which is, and becoming a top of mind and um, which they basically i'm kind of like fucking talk today i'm so sorry um which basically for me means that if they're thinking about the problem if they're thinking about they actually have a problem um the first thing they will just think about is you uh, you as a brand you as a company you as whatever and i think this is the way to go and this is what you really want to achieve that these people that have the problem you have a solution to actually think of you the first time when they're thinking about the problem. Um, but yeah. Yeah, the thing is, I could actually go through it. But um, because I can't speak today, that properly at least, <laughs> I'm quite feeling like, you know, what, um, just going through it like I have to or being like I have to, you know what, I go through the decisions. And I fuck it. I'm sorry. I do just have to plug in my fucking PC because it would just turn itself off if I'm not doing it. And then the whole recording would actually be not be away. You know, the thing is, this actually happened to me once because I was so, I don't know, I just saw it. I saw that my battery is going down and down and down. But I was like, you know what, you know, I just don't want to some kind of subconsciously. And then everything was fucked up and I just really fucked it. Yeah. Uh, decision making. In the final stage, your audience has developed a pretty tough understanding of their problem. Yeah, actually, your team. Never mind. And the potential solutions that are available. Uh, they are now ready to begin evaluating options and make a decision. Here is it is. Here it is ideal to produce content focused on truly identifying your company as the best solution. An example would be a case study, comparison tables, trial offers. 
comparison tables, trial offers. Good content in this final stage communicates urgency, uh, differentiates your company and what you offer from the competition and help your audience evaluate their options to make the best decisions or the best decision. Um, help them weigh, weigh the pros and cons of the various options, answer their most pressing questions and concerns, and back up the information you provided with ex empirical, empirical evidence and what have others done in the past and how did I, how did it work out? Make a strong evidence-based case for your company, explain why you are the best option and create comparison guides that make the advantages you offer over the competition crystal fucking clear. And with that being said, this was my fucking audio tech <laughs> and now we're here in the, in, in the fucking outro section so intro and outro whatever it is actually called is it actually called i don't know so yeah and this was it with the episode i hope you've enjoyed it and um, i hope you've got something out of it do not forget about your legacy and about giving back to the people and i hope you just liked my little audio tag i think this was actually the second time that um, it quite was seeing on uh, on here actually um, it would totally be great if the background would be transparent. I do just have to work on that. I do just have to do this. I think this will just make it a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I hope you got something out of it. I wish you the best health, health, wealth, happiness and success. And I hope you're turning in again tomorrow or tuning in again tomorrow. And I'll see you the next time. And I wish you just the really, really, really best. And I love you.